Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Hockey on the Spot with Brandon Barenfeld. I'm Brandon Barenfeld. Thanks for joining. This is episode 59 of Hockey on the Spot, and today we conclude the preseason. Um, last night was the last day of the preseason. Only one game in the form of two. Uh, that's the best way to put it. A squad game, a split squad game, the final split squad game of the preseason on the last day of the preseason. Nothing but the New York Islanders and the Ottawa Senators. Um, the new, starting with the game and the squad A game in which the New York Islanders were considered the home team. However, they did not play at the Nassau Coliseum. They would play in Barrie, Ontario, home of the Barrie Colts of the Ontario Hockey League. So therefore, for this game, we will not have the assists or the goaltending statistics, just the goals and who played in net. So <laughs> we get right to it for both, for not just this game, but really for both split squad games. Congratulations big time to the New York Islanders coming off two huge wins. The squad A game, final score 5-2, to two, and the squad B game, five, game at the Canadian Tire Center, home of the Ottawa Senators. Um, in which they, of course, were considered the home team, also would be a New York Islanders win by a final score of 4-1. to one. So we'll talk about both games, starting with the squad A game in Barry, Ontario. New York Islanders goal scored by Kyle Oposo, Johan Sundstrom, Justin Johnson. Um, Johan Sundstrom would score two goals. This one would be his second, as the fourth goal would be his second of the game. And then John Tavares would cap it all off. They got a split in goal between Anders Nielsen and Kevin Poulin. There is still a great debate of about who is going to be the backup goaltender to Evgeny Nabokov this year. A lot of people think it's going to be Kevin Poulin, but don't be surprised if Anders Nielsen does jump in. <laughs> um, Ottawa Senators goals coming from Matt Pempel and then Corey Conacher on the power play. Robin Leonard would get the full start in goal for the Ottawa Senators in Barry. But um so congrats to the New York Islanders on their squad A win as well as their squad B win. The Ottawa Senators of course were the home team for that. Final score 4 to 1 in Ottawa and once again the New York Islanders just dominating. Um so this game we will have the full statistics for you. The for the New York Islanders their goals coming from Riley Wetmore assisted by Kirill Kabanov and Eric Bolton, then Ryan Strom, assisted by Anders Lee and Chris Bruton, then Ryan Pulak would score on the power play with that big slap shot of his, biggest shot from the entire draft last year, assisted by Griffin Reinhardt and Ryan Strom, and then Brock Nelson would cap it all off, assisted by Chris Bruton, and Evgeny Nabokov, Evgeny Nabokov getting an assist, and of course, Evgeny Nabokov played the majority of the game. He led up the only goal that the Ottawa Senators would score, but still played really well. 14 saves and 15 shots and 9.33 save percentage. And then Ken Reeder, who will go back down to the American Hockey League, he came in in the third period, and he was brilliant. An 11 save shutout for him. Um, so congratulations to him for keeping the game up, keeping the game in check for the New York Islanders. And then for the Ottawa Senators... Only John Gabriel Pajot would score for them on the power play, assisted by Cody Ceci and Craig Anderson. So another goaltender getting an assist. Craig Anderson played the entire game for the Ottawa Senators with the former New York Islander Nathan Lawson as his backup. Um, he was not very good. 19 saves on 23 shots. Just 19 saves on 23 shots and 826 save percentage. And so he'll definitely will hope that that is not um, the norm for him in the regular season. And yet that basically does it for the preseason. But so we end the preseason with a huge congratulations for the, to the New York Islanders on two huge wins in both the squad A game and the squad B game. Now we have a lot of updates to go over. I was really hoping for this to be a short video. But, unfortunately, a lot of updates to go over, which is the main topic for our video. And we're going to start with an update that I already brought up in la last night's video, or yesterday's video, but I want to now go more in-depth into it. The Tampa Bay Lightning assigning 
left winger, and third overall draft pick Jonathan Drouin back to the Halifax Mooseheads of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. Everybody had this guy starting in their lineup this year and playing on the top line with Steven Stamkos and Marty San Louis. And a lot of fantasy leagues were picking this guy up, expecting him to be an instant star. But the Tampa Bay Lightning decided to go the safe route, just like what the Florida Panthers did with Jonathan Huberdeau when they first drafted him third overall in 2011. They wanted to take the safe route with him, have him spend another year in uh, Halifax and have him own his skills. He will not have Nathan McKinnon down there anymore to set up and give the puck to. And I do not believe Martin Furk's going to be down there anymore either. Um, he could be. I'm not sure about that. I'll definitely look into that. But he's going to have to find, ultimately, someone new to set up. Because this is a playmaker. He can score goals, as shown by his 41 goals last year. But he's much more of a playmaker. So, um, hopefully he does get hone his skills. And I hope to see this guy up with the Tampa Bay Lightning next season. Because I'll be honest, I personally also believe he was going to play this year and I was really excited to watch this guy play. I think he's going to be a great player. Um, former Chicago Blackhawks first round draft pick Kyle Beach has been loaned to HV71 of the Swedish Hockey League. Their first round pick from 2008. Um, this, and unfortunately he is not, he really has not proven to be anything that they've expected. Um, the Vancouver Canucks have returned Bo Horvat, the ninth overall draft pick in the 2013 NHL entry draft to the London Knights of the Ontario Hockey League. No surprise. Definitely a guy who needs more development, but could develop into both a depth player and a top six forward. The Toronto Maple Leafs have placed Fraser McLaren on IR. That's a big loss for him. He really, them, he really came in last year and proved to be a big presence for them on their fourth line. Um, <laughs> some more surprises. The Los Angeles Kings have sent down promising prospect Tyler Toffoli to the Manchester Monarchs of the American Hockey League. A lot of people had this guy coming up and playing this year, and he really came up last year and played pretty well, but obviously the LA Kings feel that there's a little bit more that he needs. He needs more development, and another guy like Jonathan Drouin, who a lot of people had, um, playing in the roster, playing on the third line and maybe being drafted in some fantasy leagues. So um, that's going to be a big hit also for many fantasy owners. The Nashville Predators have signed Simon Moser to a one-year entry-level contract. Um, he, was an, he was a humongous surprise in the preseason. The, every player that they signed to a pro trial contract, they did not expect really to do much, but this kid has done a lot. Um, Simon Moser coming out of uh, Switzerland. Um, yeah, Switzerland, and uh, he's going to be a good player for them, I think, with the way he played in the preseason. He's showing that he can be a solid offensive player in this league. The Los Angeles Kings have released goaltender Matthew Garon from his professional tryout contract, which means that Ben Scrivens will officially be the backup goaltender this season for Jonathan Quick, as I personally expected. The Tampa Bay Lightning have returned Brett Connolly, who tore up the American Hockey League last season, to the Syracuse Crunch. Um, they, he was a guy really looking to play this year. Um, he hasn't played a full season since that rookie year. Um, and so he'll definitely look to get back into the lineup at some point. Um, he, and I really hope he does. I think this guy has a lot of potential. The Anaheim Ducks make a, making a bit of a splash. Um, making a trade with the Washington Capitals, acquiring center Matthew Perot from the Washington Capitals in exchange for left winger John Mitchell and a fourth-round selection in the 2014 NHL Draft. Obviously, that fourth-round selection could be anybody, but this is obviously a different John Mitchell, not the one who is currently on the Colorado Avalanche. This is a much bigger player than that John Mitchell, but the difference is this guy's never played an NHL game, so he won't really be anything. This trade's actually going to probably be a steal for the Anaheim Ducks, as far as the Anaheim Ducks are concerned. They're getting a player who continues to improve, a guy who's going to add a lot of depth to an already depth-heavy team, and a guy who can bring some offense. And if he tr works hard enough, the 25-year-old can maybe pose as a potential second-line center if he works hard enough. Um, he showed his offensive flashes in the 2011-2012 season, 
when he scored 16 goals and 30 points, but particularly those 16 goals. Um, he's proving that he has a lot of offense in his game and a guy who also works really hard, a power forward. Smaller player, but, <laughs> but obviously this is a guy who I'm really excited to see on the Anaheim Ducks uh, roster. I think he's going to be an excellent player for them. Um, so, and I think this is going to be a steal. The only downside is that it puts some cap on their plate. Um, he's getting a bit, pretty decent sized cap hit in the final year of his two year contract. So we'll see how that plays out. The Carolina Hurricanes have placed Tomo Rutu on IR retroactive to September 21st due to a lower body injury. And I'm really feeling bad for this guy. Um, this is a guy who came back at the end of last year Played really well, and this is a guy who was looking forward to playing for Team Finland this year in the Olympics because he has offensive talent and his top six uh, abilities, but he has not been healthy a full day. Um, just like Yoni Pitkinen, he has not been healthy a full day in a very long time. When he is healthy, he's a very good power forward and a guy who can change games, but um, unfortunately, that's not going to be the case. Um, Unfortunately, yeah, it's really disappointing. It really is. Um, lots of guys. So hopefully that situation can be straightened out. Bunch of guys placed on waivers uh, 12 hours ago. We will see that around noon who got claimed off waivers. We will talk about that in tomorrow's video about who got claimed off waivers of the guys sent down. But the most significant... Uh, the guys, the significant names that were placed on waivers, Nolan Yonkman, and I'm only saying his name because of how much of a surprise he was in the preseason for the Anaheim Ducks. He was very, very good. Nick Johnson, also another name, very, very good. Alexander Solzer, Blair Jones, um, <laughs> uh, Guillaume De Deban, who was good. Corey Emerton, that was one we saw coming because the Detroit Red Wings looking to dump some salary. Philip Larson, who the Edmonton Oilers got in the Sean Horkoff trade. Colby Roback, who's a promising defenseman, a promising young defenseman for the Florida Panthers. Joey Crabb, a speedster and penalty killer. Jeff Schultz, who the Kings really only bought in from the Washington Capitals in case Willie Mitchell couldn't go. But now he can go, and so we'll see how that works out. For the New York Rangers, three significant names. Stu Bickle, Brandon Mashinter, and Daryl Powell. These are guys they they're could be looking to get off their roster, particularly Daryl Powell. He could be a good waiver pickup for anybody because he was arguably the best New York Ranger in the preseason. Um, Andrew Abbott for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Bracken Cairns, a 32-year-old for the San Jose Sharks. Dana Tyrell for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Matt Taramina, Mike Angelitis. Um... Uh, John Michael Lyles for the Toronto Maple Leafs. We talked about that one already, um, but that's probably the most significant name um, going to waivers. He'd be a good pickup for a team, any team looking for an offensive blue liner and a power play quarterback. In my mind, I would actually probably would really like the Colorado Avalanche to bring this guy back. I think when they let him go, they really lost a piece of their defense. So I think John Michael Lyles going back to the Colorado Avalanche would be great. And I really hope the Avalanche are watching this video. I really hope at noon we see that the Colorado Avalanche have claimed John Michael Lyles off waivers. Um, TJ Brennan, another name, promising defenseman. Um, and then this was probably the big mistake here. The Vancouver Canucks placing Nick, top prospect Nicholas Jensen on waivers. That did not happen. That was a big mistake made by the TSN. And then the Winnipeg Jets, Patrice Cormier and Adam Party. Um, so we'll see how that plays out as well. Um, Alex, Alex Ovechkin of the Washington Capitals was the first Russian torchbearer for the 2014 Sochi Olympics torch relay that started yesterday. A moment Ovi calls the best moment of my life, or my being his life. Um, and I'm really happy for this guy. I really, really am. Um, also want to throw this out there. The Ottawa Senators... Forward Bobby Ryan came out with a documentary with Chris Simpson. Be sure to check that out. The Secret Life of Bobby Ryan, whose real name whose real name is Robert Stevenson. Um, he was chain and you know and big big story. It's a real deep story. Definitely check that out. Um, I suggest it is some. It is definitely in your best interest. 
The Pittsburgh Penguins, of course, have been showing interest in Ilya Brzgalov with news that Thomas Bakun could miss a fair chunk of time due to blood clots. It's believed that the Penguins, who have also shown interest in Jose Theodore, will place Bakun on long-term injury reserve in order to make space for another goaltender. And they really do got to go after one of those two. If they and it, which one they go after really, to me, depends on how much faith they have in Marc Andre Fleury. If they think he's going to push and have a comeback year, then go after Jose Theodore, who's not going to play that many games. He'll play enough games to give Flurry a break, but he won't be their guy going into the playoffs. If they think that Flurry's going to be inconsistent again, then go after Ilya Brzgalov, a guy who could re- take the starting job come crunch time in the playoffs. So we'll see how that plays out. I'm really interested to see how that plays out. Um... <laughs> Um, the NHL will decide on the hybrid icing at, at this afternoon. Um, like I said, personally, I'm not a big fan of it. Um, I personally hope it doesn't co- go through, but that's just my opinion. Um, probably something that something that I probably have not talked about that's probably not on here. The Florida Panthers have signed defenseman Ryan Whitney to a one-year entry-level one-year contract. Um, he was in training camp with the St. Louis Blues this preseason. They released him, and the Florida Panthers, I think it's a great addition for them um, because I, I think he's going to be an excellent addition for their power play with that big shot from the point. So we will see how that plays out. Um, I th- Again, J- Florida Panthers just continuing to make news with the end of the preseason. So... Um, we'll see how that plays out. And last but not least, Edmonton Oilers prospect defenseman Colton Tubert has signed with Iserlohn of the German Bundesliga. Tubert was chosen 13th overall in 2008 by the Los Angeles Kings. I guess, obviously, he has not lived up to his promise as a big mobile shutdown defenseman. Um, and, of course, the, the, I would not, it would not be right if I didn't bring up the reminder that Today is the fi- the day that teams will be submitting their rosters, and um, the, each team must have a 23-man roster by 5 p.m. today. And also, again, the the final waiver wire results from yesterday's waivers will be known at noon Eastern time. Expect many moves as teams bid, sell, and ship to find the perfect roster. And that is basically it. So can't wait to see who got claimed off waivers. Um... Nothing yet, obviously. Um, There's definitely going to be lots of rumors going around, seeing who did what. Um, And we'll definitely keep you posted on that. Um, There will be more updates tomorrow. Tomorrow, last few updates before the regular season begins. Because guess what? The regular season begins tomorrow. Be sure to check that out. Tomorrow, festivities open up with a great matchup, actually. The Toronto Maple Leafs and the Montreal Canadiens. Then the Washington Capitals will take on the defending Stanley Cup champions, the Chicago Blackhawks. And last but not least, the Winnipeg Jets will take on the Edmonton Oilers. That will begin tomorrow's regular season action. I'm so excited for hockey season. I bet all of you are too. So for tomorrow, we'll go over any more updates that go on, all the waiver claims. And if we have time, I may even do another video Um, of my thoughts on each of the different divisions, the Metropolitan Division, the Atlantic Division, the Central Division, and the Pacific Division, my personal thoughts on each division and each team in the division, my final outlook of each team going into the regular season. All right, guys, that'll do it for episode 59 of Hockey on the Spot. This has been Hockey on the Spot with Brandon Barenfeld. I'm Brandon Barenfeld. I'll see you guys again tomorrow when the regular season begins. Thank you and have a great day.